Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Oh, and welcome to the Dork Forest. I'm Jackie Cation. I am your host of the Dork Forest. You probably know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com. We're all over iTunes and whoever has downloaded it and repurposed it for whatever your needs. That's right. So feel free to review the show on iTunes. Uh, feel free to email me, Jackie at JackieCation.com, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. Anyway, uh, let's do the credits. Mike Rickbert composed and sang that song you just heard. He sang it with his wife, Sarah. He'll sing again his words to the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Patrick Brady is going to fix this audio, and Vilmos does my website. Okay, there are many ways to support the show. Let's talk about them. The easiest way is just to tell other people about the show and follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat at Jackie Cation and tell people uh, word of mouth, word of mouth. Another way to support the show financially doesn't cost you anything is the Amazon banner. On JackieCation.com, there's an Amazon banner under support the show. And on dorkforest.com, there's just an Amazon link that takes you to Amazon. And both take you to Amazon. You order like normal, and the show gets a little bit of a kickback. doesn't cost you extra. It's just a way, if you order from Amazon, to help the show. More direct way of helping the show, you can uh, give money to the show via PayPal. There's a PayPal button under the Support the Show page on JackieCation.com, and there's a PayPal button on dorkforest.com. You can donate directly. If you want to give monthly, I haven't made that easy. I don't have a monthly setup. Uh, I know that it's easy. Uh, I just don't have any time to do it. So you have to remember every month that you like the show and then give me money. So uh, I'll use it wisely on audio cables and chocolate, whatever. Uh, another way to support the show, if you don't like PayPal, is people have been Venmoing me money. I'll take it. That seems lovely. Jackie at JackieCation.com. It's just under Jackie Cation. So whatever. If you have listened to all 600 and whatever episodes of the Dork Forest and would like more Dork Forest, there are premium episodes, probably a dozen of them. And they are, in the last couple of years, if I do a live episode, it usually costs me some money. So I have been putting them up on Bandcamp and they cost money. They cost two bucks a pop. But if you go to the dorkforest.bandcamp.com, you can see those different shows. They're usually live episodes around the world. And there is also a a four- Four stories on a on a sort of a handmade storytelling album that I made over there too, and those are just a buck each. So if you want to go to Bandcamp, you can do that as well. You can order merch on JackieCation.com. There are shirts and CDs and a DVD of my stand-up. There's the stand-up CDs, Circus People. It's never gonna be bread. This will make an excellent horcrux, and my brand new album, I Am Not the Hero of This Story. And they're all available as CDs on JackieCation.com. They're all available digitally on Amazon and iTunes. And you can just listen to them on Pandora and Spotify and whatever. So, but if you like hard copies, let me know if you want them signed or not. Um, There's also a DVD of the Horcrux album, which is video. That's what a DVD is. And you can download that at ComedyFilmNerds.com if you just like a download. Okay, there are shirts. There's my stand-up shirt, Spooky Reading Girl. There's also two Dork Forest t-shirts. There's the Ranger of the Dork Forest t-shirt, and there is a Dork Forest logo shirt. And all the shirts are made in the United States, union-made, so they run a little big because they're made by Americans. Other than that, my stand-up is available on the website on JackieCation.com. You can watch my Conan sets. You can watch a bunch of different stand-up sets. You can, and then you can see what my schedule's like. Enough of this. Let's get into the show. It's a really good one. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I am in Brooklyn, New York, uh, with Scott Marvel Cassidy. Uh, Scott Marvel Cassidy. Hello. Like all of those things. Dot com is your website, right? Yes, that's it. And you can Thank see you. the art. You can see the art, the art. of Scott Marvel I'm a painter. Cassidy. Yes. <laughs> and we are in New York City, and I don't have an episode for uh, this week, and we have been talking about you being on, and too much explanation, because it's happening right now. Yeah, and yeah. I'm in New York, or Brooklyn with you, Yeah, and my wife. Uh, Marie Bamford. There you go. Friend That's of the people. 
One of the reasons I'm on here. That's one of the reasons. Is, <laughs> let's, is face you were, let's face it. Let's face it. Let's face it. You were right there. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, how about that guy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes people get on the dork for us because they're standing in front of me. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, it belittles kind of the experience, possibly. <laughs> but it's okay. It's it an honor. It's all, an honor to stand in front of you. We are all we are all valued, and uh, and you are valued for standing in front of me. Uh, you like the music. I like music, um, and I could have gone any route, any band, uh, any subject in terms of music, popular, classical, whatever. Uh, But I'll just focus on a band called Bardo Pond. How do you spell Bardo Pond? B-A-R-D-O Pond, P-O-N-D. That's in a body of water. Bardo is in a bard. Bardo is sort of a, a, a limbo... Uh, between heaven and hell, I'm I'm it's thinking. A, oh, I it's a real it. thing. Yeah, it's, I think it's a Buddhist term, perhaps. Oh, or I'm probably so. Are wrong they an right LA now. band? No, they're a Philadelphia band, and that's why the I brought them up because I went to art school with the guitarist and singer. Oh, okay. Yes, and so I've known them for about 25 years. And are they still together? Yes. All right. And they're a, a well-known uh, psych band in the indie circles. Uh, okay. I've seen them probably 12 or more times. And I've hung out with them for quite some time. So it is clearly somebody plays the guitar. Yes. Uh, uh, so there's, uh, I think, five, five band members. There's uh, Isabel, the singer, John and Mike, brothers. Um, they are both the guitarists. Okay. Uh, Clint, the um, bassist. And there's been the different drummers. I think a, the drummer now is Jason. Yeah. Over the years. Yes. And and they play like a psychedelic rock. Kind yes, of thing. Uh, I would say drug infused, uh, psychedelic, uh, drone, not uh, trip hop, not, not trip hop, like straight up um, drone psychedelic guitar work. Not uh, necessarily a rock and roll beat, but um, kind of uh, around. You but know. not electronica. I would say more towards uh, art damage kind of noise. Even Terry Riley, I would say, uh, uh, well-known right. avant-garde uh, composer. Now yeah. that, those are all uh, words that other people will know. <laughs> I hope so. And I'm sure I'm missing out some other descriptions. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, yeah. Do you know, like, when I think of psychedelic rock, I think of Jimi Hendrix. Yes, exactly. Mostly because of the posters. So take a <laughs> Jimi Hendrix song and take a sort of uh, sort of the jam sp- Aspect. I, I, okay. I, avo- I want to avoid the word jam because it sounds like the, the Grateful Dead, but it's more like um, jam as when in they improvise? feedback. Yes. In their, but their song, they have song structures, but then it goes off on a, uh, uh, a ethereal gets... tangent, I would say. Ethereal tangent. I'm going to go with I that. I love ethereal yeah. tangent. There you go. Freaking ethereal is the greatest. That's, I, I know someone Cause... might be cringing out there, but no, I don't no. Know. Well, the thing is, is that um, it's a good word for it's two good words for me because I know exactly what you mean. Then. Yeah. And um, okay. But there is a song structure that is left behind after a while. Okay. And, uh, some songs. Some songs are really long. I think there's a song oh. called. Amen on their first album, which was probably 1991, okay. uh, called Amen, and that was a pretty amazing like a monster of a song. song something, something like that, I'm something, sure. I've, I've, I've heard of songs being that long. Yeah. And that's not going to get a lot of radio. Play. And uh, the thing is, I'm a very straight person in terms of drug use and drinking. I don't do any of that. Yeah. And I think, and I love this music, but I think if I was under the influence, it would probably be even more amazing. But it is amazing to me. In fact, it seems like... Oh, I don't have to do drugs because I can listen to this. Right, right. Yeah. And well, what and what draws you to it? Is it is it the creativity or is it the guitar work? Um, what is it's it? it's both, and yeah. it's all all the above. And also, I became friends with them through at art school, and the art school we went to is the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, mm-hmm. and on Cherry Street in Philadelphia, and it's the first art school in the country. And uh, Eakins really? had gone there, Mary Cassatt, it's, and it still teaches sort of classically based uh, kind of format, like draw from a, a model or a, a cast, you know, a plaster cast. Right. Um, and it's uh, kind of a revered school. But and on, while saying that, also it's sort of a um, school that uh, perhaps has lost its shine because it is this old kind of... Uh, teaching well, of how when did it open? If it's the first like 18 art school, in the, something uh, like yeah. and Philadelphia's old. Yeah, so Philadelphia's you guys old. Got that belt. And the building it's in, it's an old Furness building, which is a famous architect in Philadelphia. Oh, okay, <clears throat> yeah, and it's uh, it's wonderful. 
and it had uh, yeah, just great. Okay, that's well. So you knew them from there, yeah. And that's have you Mike were you and always Isabel into music? I knew. Um, like from when you were a kid. I'm sorry, John and Isabel. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I've always loved music since I was a kid. Um, I would say the first music I got into was um, uh, was uh, Doctor Demento. Oh. <laughs> Right, which is all parodies and, and all Wonderful. different kinds of And it music. was always on at 11 o'clock at night, which yep. I wasn't supposed to be up, but yep. uh, literally, literally put the blank, blanket over your head and turn the radio on. Yes, yep. That's it. And listen to it till one in the morning, because at the one in the morning, they would have the top five of the week. Yeah, they would. Uh, number one. <laughs> do, 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 and he would uh, count it off, and it was always uh, usually... Um, um, uh, I'm looking over my dead dog Rover or something. Oh yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I remember. I, I my sister loved it and Doctor Demento, and I remember listening to it, going, "Well, that one's dumb." Yeah, and yeah. then I was yeah. like, "I uh, that one's a smart joke." And I, yeah, exactly. and I didn't have. I was a snob at mm. at seven or eight. What's oh happening yeah, over there? absolutely. And then you had uh, you know even uh, then. Um, Steve Martin's huge King Tut, yep. which was a, always a favor on that show, but mm-hmm. uh, that I think that was like the big breakthrough for Doctor Demento right, in some that ways. He was, that's that, where you can hear it. That's the only place you could hear it, almost. Yeah. And what about uh, so? But that you had to be little was the, when when you were listening to that. What was yeah. the first album you bought? If I oh, um, get into that, first album I bought is like the best of a Be- the Beatles. It was oh. like the red album with them looking down the st- staircase kind of thing. It was like a two album set. Did you ever have like a close and play? I, there were some neighbor kids who had. Uh, no, play. we had my parents had. We had my grandfather's. Um, Oh, Victrola. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was, I think it was Victrola, was, but like 1960s Victrola. Yeah. And my so, grandfather had crazy records. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. And my That's, dad did too. He had this weird Japanese Kyoto, K- Kitaro player, I think it was. Yeah. And it was just this screaming, I shouldn't say screaming, but it was loud singing. It sounded and like screaming. Plunking, bang, bang, bang. And I was fascinated by it because it's like, what is this? Right. I don't know what's going on. And you're like, but you're told it's music. Yeah. So you're like, okay, so music can be anything. And my mo- dad would play it to irritate my mom. and But, but you know, it didn't irritate <laughs> me. I was like, that is cool stuff. That is cool stuff. Yeah. That is want- interesting. So you were drawn right from the get yes. about kind stuff that was interesting. Maybe. Yeah. You were like, you cannot irritate me. Why don't you try <laughs> to do that again? And, and also it was interesting because uh, we were Jehovah Witnesses at that point. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, anything uh, out of the norm was, I'm on board. You were like, please, anything <laughs> yeah, that isn't, yeah, that, yeah. That, that can mimic not my birthday. Well, that's, a, and, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> but being uh, a Jehovah Witnesses, is, of course, is not of the norm. But uh, when you're in it, you're trying to fit in and be a normal, uh, good boy who knows the scriptures. And, right. And uh, but at eight years old, when my mom became a Jehovah Witness and we had to follow, um, right. I was an atheist. I was a straight up atheist. Wow! And I knew it. Yeah, because at eight, all what, of a sudden, what happened before? Was there any religion before eight? No, I mean we were maybe a vague Episcopalians. You know, okay. So there wasn't a lot of church before that. Not at all. Okay. And then, but there was birthdays. There was Christmas. There was Halloween. And at eight, there was no more of that. So because wow, she found uh, the bossiest, one of the bossiest Jesuses. And I think it was a way to have a community for her because my dad was such an awful person. It was oh, a way fair for enough. Her. Fair to enough. get away from him. And he would refer to the Jehovah Witnesses because he never joined. He mm-hmm. called them the Jehinky Winkies. Uh, yeah. Charming. Yeah. That You know what it makes? It makes me saying that they were bossy Christians two seconds ago yeah. sound downright nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> as awful as it was, um, I got to give them kudos because um, in my town of Wayne, Pennsylvania, right next to us was a place called Devon, Pennsylvania. And they had the Devon Swing, uh, Swim Club. Okay, and there was not a lot of there. They did not allow coloreds, as they said, oh, a sign because you were raised in the we're talking, 12th century. We're talking nineteen seventy four. Yes. No sadly, coloreds. Sadly, nineteen seventy four yes. in Wayne, Pennsylvania. Uh, yes, and the um, our uh, church protested, which oh, I was okay. like, that is pretty cool. How you long gotta, did did uh, your mom last? How long did you? Uh, okay, so eight to sixteen. At sixteen, my mom wanted a divorce from my father, mm-hmm. a very abusive man. She um, had to quit the church because they said, "No, you cannot get a divorce." Even oh. though he wasn't part of the church, he wasn't part of the church. Never joined. Yeah, and essentially, the church gave her the courage to. Face no, she him had and, to quit 
the church. Well, but I mean, the yeah. thing is, oh, is yeah. it, I mean, she had a sense of community yeah. enough so that she could be strong enough in her sense of self to go, Absolutely. this is a disaster. Yeah. I got to get out of this. Yeah, got to save the kids too. Right. So. Let's save the kids and get out. And yeah. then with all of that, yeah. it completely backfires. And the church is like, well, you can't stay then. And she's exactly. like, well, I, I got to go. We're done. You, yeah. You have, you've r- ripped away the curtain yeah. of the shit life that yeah. I was staring at. Yeah. 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 Good for her. So yeah. that was that. And we're, we're back. We we're back to. And then you were back to nothing. <laughs> Be well, it was interesting because or... being a Jehovah's Witness, we couldn't participate in dancing. I couldn't per- go to any of the dances. I couldn't do anything fun. Right. I wasn't even allowed to join sports teams. So you're, you know, ostracized. You're just weirdos. Yeah, yeah. So and, you couldn't uh, have any friends between 8 and 16. Then. But my brother and I were very good athletes. So we were just kind of like, okay, well. Like pick up games or something? Pick up games. We, lo- we forced, we are allowed to do Little League. Oh, we you got were? to do Little League. Okay. Yeah. And then, but the dances, no. So our social lives are a little screwed up. Yeah, a little stunted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm and doing... also going to Phillies games, you weren't allowed to uh, stand for the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Oh, um, I did. Anthem. I, of course, did because yeah. I don't like Philadelphia fans calling me a bunch of names. Right. Uh, again, to my mom's um, credit, she did not stand. She held oh, her she belief. She stuck it out. She stuck it out. And it was right. awful. <laughs> I bet. I bet it was awful. But I bet it was also kind of uh, character. I mean, like all of the things that she had to say, well, we're not going to do that. Because yeah. I'm sure every Christmas and birthday and Halloween, yeah. she had to have a fight with your dad. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So by the end of those eight years, she was used to fighting with your dad. And she was like, you know what? I could just leave. Exactly. We just take the kids and get the hell out. And also what was interesting, we had some of the greatest Christmases during that time. Because as kids, we would save up our pennies yeah. and then have a secret Christmas under the coffee table or under our beds. And we'd buy, I remember I bought Aww. my sister a little glass Snoopy. Yeah. And my brother bought me a, a crazy record called Funny Bone Favorites, which all what? the crazy. Yeah. See, so they were kind of adorable. more wonderful. Yeah. They were made yeah, wonderful. They were like secret weddings. Yeah. I mean, weddings. <laughs> God, I mean secret. God, what am I? Secret Christmas. I just woke up. So. And right. And then uh, you guys, it was almost like a Dickens like moment where you're Absolutely. like, I'm going to find an orange and give it to That's my right. mama. And <laughs> little Timmy, little Timmy. <laughs> We're we're staving off scurvy over here. Exactly. I like An it. Orange or uh, uh, what's a corn on the cob with a face on it for my for a doll. Oh, that that's was from, right. Uh, oh, Little House in the Prairie. The Waltons. Yeah. Um. So so you would listen to um. You're listening to Doctor Demento, and then you get that Beatles album. Beatles album, amazing. Uh, and, and at that point, uh, to stay away from my father, I would I lived in the attic. Which the attic had no heating, mm. uh, no Philadelphia, no yeah, heating, no heating, no heating, and it wasn't. It was very hot in the summer, yeah. And uh, so I could see my breath, and but that's where I played my records because my dad couldn't get at me up there. It wouldn't come up there because it was literally freezing temperature, right? right. So I'd bundle myself in my camping sleeping bag <laughs> and listen to the Beatles, and because he would yell at me to come down the stairs, mm-hmm. and I would. Wouldn't. You would not yeah, do it. I was protected by the cold. You're, and the music. Yes, and, and the, the music. music, yeah. So did the Beatles open like a floodgate? Uh, the Beatles opened a floodgate, but then um, I think it was sort of uh, just hating music other than the Beatles, and there's got to be something else out there. Yeah. And then uh, TV, they had this thing called Night Flight, and it was this oh, late yeah. night show pre-MTV, and there was, they would show things. It was usually on after Saturday Night Live. So we'd it was sometimes, on like 11 o'clock at night on like, like WB. I think, I think but not, be, well, for like me in Philadelphia, it was something. on. Yeah. And it was on at like one in the morning. Again, I'm not supposed to be up, but I could watch it. And sometimes it'd be like the cramps mm-hmm. or the dead Kennedys. And you're like, what is going on out there? At first yeah. it was like, I would say druggy music, yeah, as my yeah. parents would say. But then uh, a friend of mine in school. Oh, this is what basically the click was. Uh, Devo was on Saturday Night Live. I think it was 1978. Okay. And it was just like, what is this? What is going on? Um, and then coming on the bus the, on the next, on the Monday, and some kids being so upset about how awful they were, and I'm going, that was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Right. I don't know anything about Devo except for those hats. Oh, yeah. And it was, the, it was that was a probably a watershed moment. And then Sun Ra was on. He was a Philadelphia guy, and I didn't know that at the time, but yeah. he was an avant-garde jazz dude. Again, what is going on here? What did Sun Ra play? <laughs> 
Did he just play, like, the uh, weirdo or? jazz? And I think, oh god, what guitar was he jazz? No, he's uh, behind the piano, and he oh, okay. he was he's been around for ages, and yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually lived lived in a house in Germantown with his band of maybe thirty guys <laughs> and girl. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So again, wow, what's going on here? And there wasn't access to that music like there is now. Yeah. So it was just so obscure, even though uh, Devo was on a major label at that point. Right. And they had been on television. Yeah. Of when yeah, there but, was only like. But yeah, they're on channels. television. Yeah. But back, back then, who, like, still, it was obscure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, then, then going to school and finding most people hated it. It's like, yeah. wow. Okay. Because. The school, our school at that time, it was mostly Bruce Springsteen, Billy Joel. Well, some Billy Joel <laughs> happening. <laughs> and uh, uh, a lot of James Taylor, which is fine, but, you know, uh, wasn't singing, it wasn't saying anything to me at that point. Devo, no. all of a sudden, was some, something And this is like else. 78, 79. Yeah, about so, that, yeah. So you skipped a whole, the disco thing never grabbed you. Yeah, no, no. My sister went to disco. It was a place called Troubles in uh, Valley Forge and... Um, Again, I was already uh, uh, you had already in the been ass sucked with my opinion. Some sort of yeah. alt thing. yeah, yeah, and I and I like cartoons and comic books, and uh, I didn't collect them, but I, I I was aware of it, and I could draw back then, so I was getting to the weird the weird kids in school. Um, yeah, yeah. So did you find other kids at in school who liked the Devo? Yes, that? maybe about four other kids, and then yeah. finally you were like, well, at least I could talk to them about this. Weird exactly, band. Yeah. and uh, they were usually did they have tapes or albums you could borrow. They or? had albums, yes, and yeah. then there was. Was this thing called this compilation called Erg a Music War? And it was a two album set that had maybe uh, maybe thirty songs on it from Echo and the Bunnymen, Devo, Police. On it was just the great yeah. X, and so that opened up a lot of things. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, And then the the ska movement hit, so I got into the specials, and the specials were on a TV show called Twenty Twenty because they were talking about the depression and the poverty of London at the time, and then. Oh, right. Throughout the the show, they would show clips of the specials, which okay. would, was again, what is going on over there? Right, because because ska. I did an episode with Brandy Posey entirely about ska. Oh, cool! I don't remember, and she sent me a mix that I okay. listened to, and it was fun. Yeah, and it was it seemed, um, sort of super inclusive and and sort of like. Uh, the like the black and white vans represented racial unity. Okay, I did not know that. Wow, I didn't know and, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, okay, uh, because I think when I asked her, uh, she said she wanted to do ska, and I said, "Isn't that kind of druggy music?" <laughs> every time there's an episode about music, druggies, it's always like druggies. I always. Rangers of the Dork Forest know that yeah. I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I have got one album, and uh, I think I had a Police album. Yeah, I had I was listening to a lot of Harry Chapin. Uh, okay, my, my university years I was pretty depressed. Yeah, yeah, and nobody was more depressed than Harry Chapin. Oh yeah, so yeah. I thought I'd listen because I, I would always get less depressed when I listened to Harry Chapin because he seemed more depressed. What than was me. his song? Be- uh, Cats in the Cradle. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, Taxi. Wanna... Yeah, and he did yeah. a song about uh, a baby in the third world dying. Their last guest. Oh, <laughs> it, wasn't a time. God. it was like a two and a half. It was the story of this baby's life. An yeah, infant yeah. is born and then dies at the end of the <laughs> song. And I remember listening to it going, I may never listen to this song again. Wow. And then I'd listen to it. I would, I would occasionally, like if I got really depressed, I would listen to it because I'm like, what? Who would even record this? Yes. Well, there, that was a, another thing. There was a whole movement of basically j- depressed uh, music like Joy Division and uh, right. early Susie the, and the Banshees. Yeah. It's okay. Just like, it's like goth they, kind of. They were pre-goth, gothy. But, pre-goth, but yeah. Yeah. Singing about morbid things, you know? <laughs> right. And not cheerful about no, it. No, like, no. But I reveled in it. Like, yes. They're not singing about love. <laughs> I listen. It was Harry Chapin, and then it was Bruce Coburn. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Bruce Coburn. I remember his one Canadian song, "If I Had a Rocket, rocket Launcher." launcher. Yeah, That's... but you know, what I always thought about that. I go, you know, you can buy a rocket launcher if you yeah. want to. I yeah. can get it for you. I don't want to see what you do. Well, <laughs> the thing about Bruce Coburn that I really liked about him was that he knew he should not have a rocket exactly. launcher. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the great things about him. That's right. <laughs> but it was funny because the commer- the uh, video for him is at the end. He's walking away, and then he turns at the to look in the camera. He's not an imposing dude. Nope. <laughs> he is a he is a I, at the time I think blonde. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of lanky uh, glasses, little glasses, <laughs> yeah. thinning hair. Just kind of yeah. yeah. Which yeah. of course could be super chilling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That> could... <laughs> 
<laughs> that could be the worst. He's got um, an acid bath in the back there. So Echo and the Buddy Men, like I know the names of these bands, yeah, like yeah. Echo and the Buddy Men and Joy Division. And... But you understand that stuff, people would get upset about you back then. You're like, um, even in the uh, punk world, like if you like Joy Division or Echo and the Bunny Men, you were basically an art fag, you know, because there was divisions even in the, the ob- obscure I haven't music. heard the term art fag since the 80s. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. it was like they were super nervous about you liking because it wasn't hard rock. I mean, I never got chased down the road, no. but it was like in a conversation, it's like just, someone's like, I'm in the uh, whatever, Black Flag or the Sex Pistols or whatever. And you're like, oh, yeah, well, Joy Division. Oh, no, I can't talk no, to you. you mainstream, know. you sell out. Or, or. Of music just, for girls, or, or oh, yeah, enough. yeah. You know, we went to Andy and I went to the the punk rock museum. And did you see those pictures in Iceland? Oh yeah, yeah, that it was cool. Just yeah. opened uh, yeah. the Johnny Rotten opened it in November oh. of 2016. Okay, and it is in an old public men's room in downtown Reykjavik in the oh. basement. Oh, oh so it's just funny. a row of urinals, and then there's <laughs> uh, headphones sticking out of the urinals. <laughs> That is hilarious. It is hilarious, and you can. Pl- he's the guy down there has been playing punk since the eighties. Oh, that's funny. And he was like, "You can play any of the guitars or the drum. Make some noise." Well, Bjork was in that scene. There's a good documentary about the Icelandic uh, punk scene, right? And- well, he was talking about the Icelandic. I mean, I don't know. First of all. I don't know anything about I mean, everything I know about punk. I know from Repo Man the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great soundtrack. It has, a, yeah. It has a lot of a different bands, and they're pretty Iggy great. Pop, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I I like the Black Flag, and I like yeah, yeah. Um, that was TV Party, I think. TV on Party, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, even Pablo Picasso was an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, Jonathan and, Richmond. Is that who yeah, that yeah, was? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's so, but just. Were they were they trippy? The Echo and the Bunny Man were they sort of like? Kind of uh, yeah, they were. Again, I think they were trying to do a little psychedelic, a uh, little Doors kind of thing. Yeah, and then, uh, but it was the lyrics were a little more um, further afield or different subjects. Um, and you know, they were they were. Um, but they weren't dinosaurs and stuff. It was sort of like. No, they were a new thing. Or... Yeah, they were around with like um, I would like say political, te- maybe. teardrop. I wouldn't even say political. They were around with teardrop explodes and like the birthday party and Bauhaus. Okay. So there was all these other bands. Even though I think they all hated each other. But uh, do you yeah. have any of these albums still? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. You because I, I know you have vinyl, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not that. Yeah, that doesn't define me. <laughs> no, no, you. But uh, no, you were there. Yeah, <laughs> you were there. there. You still have albums. Is yeah. what it is. It's yeah. not like you're that guy. Yeah, which is that guy is fine, by the way. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. I'm yeah, glad yeah. you're loving the vinyl. Yeah, Knock like the, out. yeah, records. I'm gonna, yeah, it's someone asked me why my album didn't come out on vinyl, and I was like, it seemed rude since I don't own a turn. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to get Maria to put out some vinyl. I don't know why that makes me happy. It would make you happy. Yeah, as if there was a, a nice yeah, like, vinyl album. Yeah, of old I mean, baby. yeah, it's Maybe. good to have. I like uh, records of uh, comedy records like vinyl. Yeah, because <laughs> then do you like them because they're they got they got enough room to write all the liner notes. Yeah, you can world. read, you get information. It's like a tangible thing, and it's uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I just grew up with it. So. Yeah, I never. Uh, I think the first album I bought was Fifty Second Street, uh, Billy Joel. Oh, then, uh, <laughs> <It's good. laughs> the Billy Joel story. Wait, it's, what was Billy Joel? That was the one where he's on the bed with a mask. No, that's the Stranger. That's the Stranger. Yeah, yeah. Which I think was on Bill on Fifty Second Street. Oh, okay. But yeah, the yeah. weird thing is, is that I don't like. I was a, what I considered to be a huge Billy Joel fan when I went to college. Yeah. Uh, I don't even own all of his albums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And I've seen him live once. Oh, okay. So it's not like, uh, I don't like live music very much just because it seems super loud. Yeah, um, yeah, it usually is. So, yeah. Because everybody's amplified. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a lot of crowds. Anyway, yeah. but uh, I did see, like, what was the first concert you went to? Oh, my God. Okay, so this informs my taste, too. First concert I went to was with my friend uh, Brian McMurdy, who I'm not, I'm not in touch with anymore. Uh, other than Facebook and uh, two other guys whose names I don't remember, and we went to the uh, the Roundup at RFK Stadium in Philadelphia. <laughs> Is that the name of the concert. That's the, the name of the concert. Nice. Okay, it's the Almond Brothers. Uh, wow. Uh, Molly Hatchet, okay. the Outlaws, uh, Rossington Collins, 
And at that point, I didn't know any of this music. I thought, well, it'll be my first concert. I'll go. I was probably 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And we went, and my friend Brian, he poured whiskey in Ziploc bags, a whole bottle of whiskey, and we put the <laughs> Ziploc bags down our pants because when they frisked us, you're not going to feel that, right? Right. So we went and started drinking about 10 in the morning, um, and we brought our hoagies. We had our hoagies with us. It's going to get us through this eight hours. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone's wearing... This is the greatest Philadelphia and story I ever. hated this music. Oh, uh, you didn't like it from the get? Uh, I wasn't really sure what it was. I just went along with the crowd, and we okay. went, and so... Brian is a redhead dude, and his shirt's off. He's wasted around 12 o'clock. He starts throwing up his hoagie. He falls into the vomit and passes oh. out. And by uh, two hours later, he is sunburnt. Oh, yeah. And we were miserable. And back then, I didn't know how to get out of the city, so I, had it. I was in for the whole <laughs> eight hours. Otherwise, I would have checked out because I was like, oh, this isn't for me. And there, was some, <laughs> there were motorcycle gang guys. It was a stadium full of people... Who, who like Molly Hatchet? Who like Molly Hatchet? <laughs> I'm sure it's. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know who Al the Almond Brothers are, but uh, Almond I've Brothers. I think Greg Almond just died, or okay. one of the Almond. And you know, I think they're revered as this great Southern rock band. Yeah, uh, kind of but it's not for me. But right, right. Yeah. And no, no. It, there are other people who love it. Yeah, and um, I know they're great musicians, but uh, I, it's not my style. There's something about being 16, and you're like, no, I'm going to the Roundup. The Roundup. Oh, that it is... sounds like it sounds like, isn't Roundup another name for cockroach? Uh, 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 oh, that, no, no, it's, a, it's I think it's a fertilizer. <laughs> I think the Roundup, they were talking about cattle Roundup. So yeah, it must yeah, be like yeah, Roundup. Country Rock. Yeah. I saw the World Series of Rock was yeah. my first concert okay. at County Stadium in Milwaukee. And um, I went with uh, uh, a nominal friend, an acquaintance yeah, in, yeah. in high school. And these two guys, and they had six beers for the four of us. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, and it was Ario Speedway. Okay, April Wine. And April Wine. Yeah, I don't know, but I had not heard of either of them. But then when Ario Speedway gets started playing, I remember going, "Oh, yeah, I know this song." Yeah, because <laughs> of because of uh, I've been to gas stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> well, Maria uh, a few years ago was uh, doing an um, in store at Amoeba, and they said, "Hey, while you're having your in store, what record would you like to hear?" And she goes, "Anything by Ario Speedwagon." And throughout the hour she was there, yeah. all the employees had their hands over their ears. <laughs> <laughs> She says, what's wrong? And I go, Maria, no, no nobody one likes, likes it. Ario <laughs> uh, I don't mind Ario Speedway. I don't know. Anything. I still don't know. Anything. My thing about music is that I don't listen to it enough to ever get sick of any of it. Yeah. Even like I made jokes because Andy told me our second anniversary that uh, I uh, I thought it was cotton. He thought it was, he was joking and he yeah. said it was bread. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, it's not food. What do you, it's not <laughs> and some lady next to me actually said, it's never food. What is, what, he's pulling your leg. And I was like, and so for our, our anniversary, I gave him the best of bread. This yeah, album. yeah. Oh yeah. I know. Yeah. And he, um, he never listened to it, but I, it's in my car. Yeah. So I occasionally I'll put it What's in. What's their songs? What is uh, it? What I don't know. Yeah, Beth, yeah. Oh. I hear you calling. That's Kiss. Okay. No, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, and Brett, it's it's uh, you'd know them if you heard them. I yeah, can't yeah. Remember. There, are, there are people yelling at their iPhones. Right now. <laughs> They're like, you guys can't remember a bread song. Come on, it actually reflects well upon you. Yeah, yeah. And poorly as per usual. Cheese on and me. onions. <laughs> so. So you saw – that was your first – Yeah, and then after that, I saw the Rolling Stones. Um, what? And it was at JFK. Wow. And it was the Rolling Stones with um, – Not the airport. Uh, Journey and Robert Hazard. Okay, so at that point, I'm uh, full on into the Clash and the Jam and the specials. and Oh, wow. And I have an opinion at that point. <laughs> and so we go to the Rolling Stones and Journey comes on and – what squares love Journey? So we start <laughs> screaming, you suck, Journey oh. blows, get off the stage. And about 3,000 people behind us, shut the F up. Yeah, yeah. We're going to kill you. Okay, we're, we're good. And there, was the national anthem. And there was a motorcycle gang, I think it was the Pagans, that were mm -hmm. like parallel like parallel to us. And they kind of shut us down. And we were going we to be quiet for the rest of the <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, the rest of the show, you <laughs> yeah. were good. Yeah. How were the Rolling Stones? Were they they were wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a famous, it was their um, Tattoo You tour. And it was great. It was the first uh, show of their tour that year. And I remember Mick Jagger came out in the Eagles jersey and it 
blew the roof off. Blew the roof off. Of a stadium off. that did had no roof. That so. had, they were just like, a little bit of pandering, but there's yeah. no reason not to. Oh, it was, it was wonderful. 60,000 yeah. people, do it. And, but I saw a lot of shows at that stadium. I saw The Police with Genesis and oh, wow. uh, Ellis Costello and Blondie and Joan Jett. And, uh, it was fun. But then I realized, oh, smaller venues are even better. Okay. So then that's when you start going to the punk shows and uh, seeing, uh, I saw the Minutemen, uh, LA band, San Pedro. Okay. They went to, uh, 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 let me see, a veterans hall, VFW in uh, South Philly, which was a bad area, but yeah. um, it was great to see them. And I saw so just many. just seated, like, uh, not seated because it's a rock for Yeah, you, yeah. So people are standing Maybe 100 there. people there. Maybe but again, people. that band revered and... Uh, yeah, the yeah. Minutemen. Yeah. So I've you, heard of them. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, and is I think I'm thinking of something. I think I'm thinking of the Rifleman, which is a TV show. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but I think the 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 pun on the Minutemen was also you could say it the Minute Men, or oh, all their go. songs were under a minute at that point. So, oh, were they? Yeah, okay. and they were really excellent musicians. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. And was that ska too, or is... no? That was uh, more like uh, punk rock, hardcore. It was hardcore. They okay, call it, but it was very well played hardcore. Yeah. I remember in, in college, uh, I had friends who re- liked XTC. Oh, yeah. I liked them. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was part of the whole, like, Echo and the Bunny Man. That was part on Ergo Oh, Music and they War. were women yeah. who liked XTC. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll yeah. show me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah that was, uh, yeah. But, okay, um... But that was like, my same friend who turned me on to KRS One. So, oh, which cool, is cool, yeah, hip hop. And yeah. Um, but I, you know, when 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 you own like one album, like uh, <laughs> like I seriously, I think I've seen probably five five. I saw George Thorogood, yeah, and the Go Go's opened for him. I saw them together at the JF, at JFK, and it was uh, they opened up for the Police also that day. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. So. They have worked together. Yeah, yeah. Plenty. That is funny. That yeah. is funny because George Thurgood is sort of that southern. I think. I mean, he might be one bourbon, one scotch, one beer. Yeah. Hon, hon, hon. <laughs> yeah, like white blues, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was... You ever listen to Taj Mahal? Yeah, I know. I he, saw yeah, that yeah. Guy. He was. Yeah, yeah. He was with a guy, Ry Cooter, in a band called the Rising Suns. Maybe. Maybe okay. sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. He's still alive. He's still working. Yeah, that guy's yeah. still working. Yeah. It's uh so. Um, so you go. So we come out of Bardo Pond. Yes. And is is the psychedelic kind of stuff? Where is that kind of your favorite music? Um, no. Uh, so Bardo Pond again. At, at I guess um, they weren't around till like the nineties. So, but up until then, I was more into punk rock and hardcore, and um, but more the avant garde stuff. Like I like Philip Glass at that point. Okay. Um, I would like a di- this woman. I'm Demanda Gallus. Um, but also was into art, painting, sculpting. Um, I didn't go to art school till I was 26 because I thought, oh, I don't need to go to art school. I'm going to do it. My DIY is the aesthetic at that point. <laughs> and uh, plus, my parents weren't going to pay for it anyway. Right, right. And, so. But I was cutting grass and uh, doing phone work and just awful. Yeah. But uh, I was putting out underground magazines like uh, punk rock and cartoon stuff. Yeah. I was influenced by this guy, Gary Panter, Charles Burns, and this thing called Raw Magazine that was put out by... Um, I've heard um, of that. Art Spiegelman, yeah. Okay, And his yeah. wife, Francois Mouly, yeah. And is that out of, was that out of the East That was Coast out of New York, yeah. yeah. And so that came down, it was beautifully printed, full color, and it was, the format was odd shape. And right. um, yeah, I remember uh, uh, Art Spiegelman came to... Uh, to Philly to to have it read all his from his book Mouse, which is famous. So I went, and it was me, Charles Burns, a cartoonist, and yeah. two other people. And uh, what? yeah, that was it. <laughs> and oh I got, he did a nice drawing for me in the book. And uh, I swear, to God, within a year, the the book became famous and sort of opened the floodgates for graphic novels in America. I think it was already popular in France and right. Japan. Yeah, and it was, and it was, and and you could do more sort of indie stuff with it. Yeah, too, yeah. Where it wasn't just all superheroes and yeah, and whatnot. And that was a, a, like what a, year was that? Do you think that was probably eighty four or five? Yeah, and so at that point, that was my uh, kind of understanding of art. I mean, I knew there's painters and stuff out there, but that was what I gravitated to, towards was that. Mm-hmm. And then around the same time, I discovered this British artist named uh, Lucian Freud. And he was this straight up figurative painter, painted from life. And all of a sudden, I needed to, I needed to learn how to paint with oils because I was like, wow, if he could do that, I could right, do that. Right, right. Because I could draw really well at that time. 
and I would go to Philadelphia and do my thing. And then I saw this gallery of like-minded painters of Lucian Freud for yeah. the school, Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. And on a lark, I applied. Mm-hmm. At that point, I'm probably around 26. Yeah. And I applied in 1989, and uh, I got in. <laughs> and not only that, they gave me a full ride. Oh, my God. So, okay, I'm going. So you just had to come up with a portfolio? Is that... Yeah. Because I mean, applying for art school has to... They have to give samples of... Yeah, yeah. So I I had already drawn... I had... You had boatloads uh, of stuff that you had drawn. Yeah, millions of drawings. That's what I do all the oh, time. Oh, that's just amazing. Draw, and I would draw from life, and I didn't have any training at that point. And so I went to school, and oddly enough, I was 26, so I thought, oh, I'm going to be in with a bunch of children, 18-year-olds. I don't know if I could do this. Yeah. And that was the same year the wall came down and the depression hit, uh, or a recession, I should say, right. not depression. And so, uh, it was there, pretty depressing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden the school is swamped with Russians and Eastern Europeans. Oh. And, uh, and they're all in their late twenties and early And 30s. architects. Cause they're not, they can't work at that point. So oh, I'll take, I'll go to this school. So the average age was 26 at that point oh, for awesome. the next four years. So I lucked out. What is the cha- what are the and chances? Did you meet some like some of the people that yes. are still your best friends? Yeah, and Jesse, who you met yeah. last night, and a bunch of other people. Yeah, that's I'm so still, cool. And that's where I met Bardo Pond, who were about my age at that point. I right. met Isabel, the singer, and John, the guitarist. Yeah, huh? Yeah, and it was awesome. that is awesome. Yeah, so and I did. I so you just started hanging out with them because they were also musicians. Yeah, and that and I remember when John was learning his guitar teach himself guitar in <laughs> his studio and right. we were talking about a band called slint that we both liked and uh he was uh, bardo pond at that point was called sang sarah okay and another uh the drummer bob sense was in, going to school too he has since left the band but right. uh yeah so the ba- the band that you liked was called slink <laughs> Uh, no, a band I liked that we hit, the, the, we the talked about was called Slint, S-L-I-N-T. They're like a, a well-known band from Kentucky. They put out maybe three albums, but the band, the, the album that kind of is always on the top 100 list of records of all time is called Spiderland by Slint. Oh, and really? again, uh, it was uh, also influenced on Nirvana and bands okay. like that. So they were kind of revered. And so, yeah, that's yeah. what we hit so it off on. Is it kind of grungy? Is uh, Slint more? Slint is more um, like pre grunge, obviously. Uh, pre grunge, not grunge at all. I would say more like stop start. Um, kind of the guy's not almost just talking over oh, okay. uh, kind of uh, more minimalist kind of structures. Yeah, huh. yeah. All right. It's now we're mostly talking about like the music and the and the and the instrumentation and the and the use of music. What lyric lyrically? What are most like? Like what, for example, like Bardo Pond. Yeah. What are their lyrics? I would say it's a lot of influence of like Eastern religions. I don't even know if I can even tell it, but I mean, Eastern like religions. Like spirituality kind of stuff? Yeah, maybe Alan Rudy. Watts, um, but not as, not um, goofy. I mean, it's like, no. I don't even know how to say it. Um yeah, more. Um, I think they have a song called "Tantric Porno." Um, okay. Yeah. Then they have a song called. Uh, so uh, they they sing about love. Yeah, yeah. Tantric porno. Yeah, they have a. They have their first album was called Buffalo Alvarius. Okay. Which is uh, the the toad that you use for a drug. Oh, to lick. Yeah, you and lick the, the toad. Yes. From Australia. Exactly. So That's that was it. their first album. So, okay. And then they have other albums. Um, you know, Batholith, I don't know what that is, but um, it's a wonderful album. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. And they had an album called Amanita, which was in uh, uh, the top 10 list of uh, Rolling Stones magazine, probably 96. Yeah. Man, there was, there's, I own one album of almost every genre. Yeah. And there is a band, I think they're out of Oklahoma City. They've been around for at least 30 years, and they had a hit. And it's... Uh, well, Flaming Lips are... Yes. Fun. Yes, bingo. That's it, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my God. You pulled that That's out of probably the only... The, band. Yeah. From Oklahoma City? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well played. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I liked... It was, I have one of their albums. Yeah. And it was lovely. Yeah, And awesome. it feels kind of trippy and a little psychedelic. Yeah, their very first album, uh, they have a song called uh, Charles Manson Blues, and I love that album. And yeah. you would not know that was the same band, because back then it was full up. Full on like Sonic Youth. Oh, really? Grunge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because the the one that I have is the is more of a trippy. Is that the of... one about tangerines? 
No, I oh, think okay. that's one after the one oh, okay. <laughs> and so because I I think I bought another album, and they're they're such great musicians. Yeah, yeah. That every album changes a style. Yeah, they're fun. They're like, they're fun band. No, I don't want any part of that. I like the last one. Well, my friends saw a show by them, and they asked people to bring boom boxes, oh. and they handed out tapes, four different tapes to four different parts of the audience. Yeah. So uh, during the song, they would uh, orchestrate the audience to turn their Boom boxes on, turn it off, and yeah. they played. Basically, they played a song with the audience. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. That's. Yeah. I mean, I love like okay, go. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. See any yeah. of those videos? Yeah, the videos are pretty amazing. The videos yeah. are amazing. The I have, I think I bought Andy an album for Christmas, yeah. so of course it's on my Amazon Prime. Yeah, and so when I hit shuffle, I'll get an okay, go song, and I'm like. Is this actual music or is it just all video? <laughs> yeah. And uh, but there's there's lyrics and yeah yeah and they're singing about life and yeah their videos and, are uh, extraordinary. That Rube Goldberg one is a uh, yeah. really cool. They're uh they're they're pretty amazing. I mean the the music there's the pentatonics. Have okay, you, have I don't you, know that. They're they're they dress in old timey clothes. It's okay. the guy who plays a piano and he does uh, modern hits. Oh wow! In forty style. Oh, that's funny. So it's funny, like um, um, baby got back, or I mean, whatever it is. It's like it's <laughs> baby some got pop back, song. <laughs> and and then it's a lady in a in a red dress, really jamming. Okay, yeah. And there, uh, we can we can watch one after, but it was yeah. like music is. I mean, there's so many different kinds of it yeah, that yeah, it's yeah. kind of fascinating. Yeah, and I I th- I think you I like get a lot of different kinds. Yeah, I think I get a little uh, OCD where I have to know something and I have to go buy the record and I have to know about it and get into it. Yeah. and that's why I I brought up Bardo Pond because I've I've tried to get most of the uh, recordings, but they're so prolific I can't even keep up with them. And they have given me the re- some of the recordings, so right. that helps. Do they do bootlegs or stuff? <laughs> they too, do. But uh, I guess they're self released bootlegs. So yeah. uh, they live in a, a sort of a warehouse. At least some of them do in um, an area called Fishtown in, in Philadelphia. Okay. And so, but they, you know, they toured the world. They've uh, opened up for Dinosaur Junior and Sonic Youth, and the, they're okay. Yeah, and so they work. They work. They, they work. but they also that's another thing. I work with them at the Philadelphia ICA, the Contemporary Art Museum in Philadelphia. That's how I got to be closer to them. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so they're like I said, they're all artists and uh, I think they also do a lot of art installation jobs to keep oh, it going. Okay. Yeah, so they have So jobs. they're kind of a team. Yeah. And they've got a lot of irons in the fire and the yeah. band is one of them. Yes. But they're but they're like sort of creatively living a yeah. five different lives. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Well, good for them, man. Yeah, and uh, Isabel and John are married. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is John one of the brothers? Yes, John, okay. the Gibbons brothers, yeah. 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 So that's fascinating. And then what do you do you are are you keeping up on new music? Cause oh yeah, so yeah, much. yeah. I'm I'm on top of it. I mean, like you said, like it's so much like uh, I like metal, I like uh classical, I mean Right. I can't even name. You I like African new... reggae right now. It's kind of thing I'm listening oh, really? to. Dub, especially dub, which is a kind of spacey remixed uh, versions of reggae songs. Okay, yeah. I had uh, Lorraine Newman on, and she likes EDM, electronic dance, dance music. music. Yeah, I think that. Uh, is that like that's that, not or is my it thing. I don't know. Harder. Maybe that's a little harder and more dancey. Yeah. Okay. I think the dance aspect of it is. She for said it. she went to Coachella, <laughs> and the great thing about getting older is that someone always finds her a chair now. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's a great episode of the Dork Forest. Uh, it's I should probably put together like all musical episodes of the Dork Forest so people can listen to me not and be re-explained. Yeah, yeah. Times. I never went, went to Coachella because I think I got burned out on the whole going to stadium rock. I can't deal with the right stadium rock all day long versus thing. festival rock. Yeah, yeah. And I th- I went to the first um, Jane's Addiction played. Oh, uh, Lollapalooza. Uh, I went to Lollapalooza, yeah. like, I, either the first or second one, the okay. one that had Jane's Addiction and um, Ice-T. Oh, wow. Uh, his metal band. Oh, yeah, uh, Body Count. Right. Yeah. And I was so irritated because I wanted it to be rap and it was metal. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know what I had 
bought myself into. Yeah. And it would rain all day in Minneapolis. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that's when I realized I don't like live music. Yeah. Or it needs to be a concert kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, when when you get swamped with a million bands in one day, it's uh, overwhelming. Right. And everybody's hammered. Yeah. And it's just, it's too much drinking yeah. for me. It's, um, I think, and then I went to the Odd Block Festival, but just to do stand-up. Okay. And so I got to hear... From a distance, yeah, <laughs> different yeah. bands. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, um, but through a bar to pun, I've got to. I've been able to go to a few concerts with them. Uh, there's this thing called All Tomorrow's Parties in the uh, early 2000s. One was at UCLA, another one was at the Queen Mary, the boat. Oh, so they had concerts on the deck in oh. the boat and on the shore there. And I saw Iggy Pop and um, so so many great bands. And that's uh, amazing. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, the, oh, the last yeah the last concert I went to was for Andy's birthday. I took him to see Elvis Costello. Oh, great! Uh, yeah, down in um, Riverside. I've seen him a bunch of times. And, yeah, yeah, I'd never seen him, and I don't think I think Andy had seen him like twice before. Oh, so cool. I hadn't seen him in years. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, it still did a great job. It was amazing. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you still listening to any of the old Doctor Demento authors? Uh, Weird Al. Uh, Weird Al is amazing. Did Weird- you ever see that VH1 of him? Uh, it was put out probably in the 90s. And it's amazing because every time you watch VH1, it's about drug use, of someone killing right, someone right. or some well, awful the behind thing. the story thing. And he was the most wholesome guy <laughs> to see on that show. And it's kind of like, oh, this is awesome. He's amazing. Yeah, he's and just, a, just guy. a happy person. <laughs> just yeah. Who happens to love music exactly. and wants to do some parodies. And yeah. just gra- it just really gave me a greater appreciation of him. Like, that's just a good person. <laughs> That's who, awesome. who does interesting music. Because all those those behind the stories ones were incredibly just one disaster. And tale. it gets boring after a while. You're like, okay, why would you do heroin? Other people have, have done it. Done Let's heroin. not do that anymore. Right. And you're going to do it. You were alerted. You killed your buddy in a car accident from uh, uh, right. Molly Cr- Motley Crue. It's like, right, right. what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like... You didn't know, like in the fifties, they did heroin and it didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. So then in the sixties, and then those you're gonna guys keep did doing it. Yeah, and we and choked then, on our vomit. Okay, right. And then was yeah, because wasn't it? Oh, we're Janis still doing Joplin it in the nineties. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, Kurt Cobain. Okay. Mitch Hedberg was doing heroin. Yeah. And they're like, what are you thinking, brother? Yeah. And, uh, he almost had his leg removed. Really? Uh, yeah, he had the gangrene in his leg because he was shooting up heroin. In oh, his leg. no, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was probably three months before he died. Oh, that's and, awful. Uh, it was pretty I, bad. of course, got his record after he died because, oh, this great comedian just died that I've never heard of. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do you have any comedy albums? Uh, I used Good to have a Woody it. Allen one, which <laughs> is still great. But uh, I, I, when I moved to L.A., I had to get rid of my records. Cause right. Just because... Because uh, of the big move. The big move and make some money off them. Oh, and, there you go. Yeah. And, I, you know, I regret it, but I had to move, so... Yeah. Well, that's... Um, yeah. Yeah. It's... My stepmother and my oldest brother used to fight over who owned the Woodstock album oh. that they had. <laughs> and I was like... There was well over three million produced. <laughs> right. I think you could probably get another one. And... Uh, that's I, the thing. People try to, uh, have, oh, I bought the Beatles White album for 80 bucks. You're like, well, you know, there was millions of those. Right, it's right. That one's available. Yeah, that one's, exactly. It's not like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a Jelly Roll Morton. Yeah, exactly. Kind of, you know, so one of his live uh, yeah. rent parties. Yeah, uh, I, rent party. Remember he had those, I took this weird music Jelly class. Roll Morton, the jazz guy. Yeah, the yeah, jazz yeah, yeah, guy yeah. from the early 20th yeah. century. Yeah, he's great. He yeah. used to have uh, rent parties. Where him that. and his buddies would play, and then people would give him money, and then they would use it for rent. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And it was in 1910 or 11 or something. And Yeah, I read this great um, Louis Armstrong autobiography, autobiography, and uh, he would talk about how bands would come on, on the same stage and play at each other as a competition, louder, faster, more oh, creative. That's, that's and hilarious. he also was, uh, uh, had a, a stable of ladies. Yeah. Oh, he had a harem of uh, sorts? Yeah, more like a pimp kind of thing. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. The, a li- sort of a library? A sort of like, no, situation? like, hey, uh, I, this is how it makes money. Yeah. Oh, it was a and, side job. And it's an amazing... Armstrong? Yeah. Had... Look, read the... It's, an, it's a great autobiography. Just, I like and he's, Armstrong. He's straight Will up I like about, him at the end of it? 
Oh yeah, because okay. he's like he's. Um, it's another era. I mean, it doesn't excuse it, but uh, in some ways it does. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Where you're like, well, you'll just have to accept that that was part of his life. Yeah, kind yeah. Of thing. And okay. um, so, and that's how he raised some money and the drug. And he's very uh, unapologetic about his life, which is great. He's not saying, oh, this poor. This is what I did. It's like, no, this is what we had to do in a way. Um, being right. A, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, the, uh, the, what, um, so who do you like now? Who's the, um, I still like the old you still bands. I like the stuff. new bands. I mean, what did I listen to recently? Uh, I bought an album by a guy named Soft Moon. Um, Soft Moon. Sort of, uh, I thought he was, a uh, sort of goth. And I thought he was a band I hadn't heard of before. Yeah. Uh, because, but he was from now. I thought he was from maybe the eighties. So oh, okay. I think there's a thing now going on where uh, bands are sort of retro, but retro for the eighties and nineties. Right, uh, right. Which I like that era. So do you now? Do you think there has been new musical styles that have come up in the last twenty years, or are we still working with the same rock? And 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 trippy and guitar. Like, is anyone doing anything new with a guitar? Well, I would say Bardo Pond for sure. Um, just in terms of uh, the, their it's their own spin on it, and it's not this regular uh, rock and roll beat. It's mm-hmm. sort of anti rock, I think. Okay. And um, so I, that's what I like about it, and I think that's why they have uh, they're still around. Because it is, uh, and they not, keep reinventing it, or is they doing? More I of say the same? they, uh, yeah, it's it's reinvented because th- now they they do, have done a lot of covers albums that I like. Uh, maybe not. They've done a few EPs of covers, okay, and that that's interesting to say. Oh, that's how they can uh, paint it their own way, and um, yeah. I, well, let me. Th- I'm trying to think because. But actually, the last year I've been listening to more dub, more reggae from the 60s and oh, 70s. Right. Oh, right. So I'm so going back. I'm trying to catch up on um, sort of. Well, that's the whole yeah. thing. I mean, it's like if you tried to, I mean, if if you if you feel like you caught up like on, on the punk stuff. Yeah. Where you don't yeah. listen to all of it, but yeah. you, you get a nice cross section and you're like, I'm pretty well educated. I got a pretty good density of European punk and American punk yeah. and yeah. whatever. I don't even know what the Asian scene was like. Yeah, but, but 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 that's the thing. Like now that you have the internet, you can find out about this stuff. Before it was like um, literally the punk music or the avant garde music at, at Third Street Records in Philadelphia was were in cardboard boxes under the shelf that you would have to ask to see. Yeah. Oh, I'll go see these. And now um, now it's everywhere. You can look it up on the internet, find out what's good to, yeah, to yeah. listen to or what I have never listened to because I didn't know about it. Yeah. But now I have access to the stuff and now I can catch up on it. And, right. Uh, and uh, it must be the worst of trying to be a completist. You know, I used to, I used to want to do a lot of sort of like – I had to give up on completism quite some time ago. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the only thing that's even left is I try to read everything of an author. Yeah, yeah. If I yeah. if I if I really like the author, I'm like, oh, I want to read all of Cage Baker. Yeah, I wanna yeah. Read all of whatever. And um, but it's but that's all that's left because music there's it, the density and the breadth. Yeah. Of it is got to be out of hand. And if you're gonna go back and look at world <laughs> reggae. Yeah, yeah. African Caribbean. Yeah, and some of those records are worth way too much money, but you can find it, download can you get it somehow. Digital? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, but it's just not printed anymore. So I don't feel bad listening Getting to it. To yeah, it. yeah, it's like, well, it's three hundred dollars to get that record. But there's a guy from the this Japanese band called The Ruins, and he's trying to listen to every piece of music ever made. Oh, is he? <laughs> I don't know how he's doing that, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was I heard about that in the early two thousands. He was trying to listen to everything. Yeah. It's, yeah, I wonder so how far he is. Good luck, man. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and it's it's. I mean, if you're a completist, that's what you you yeah. like it. You know, well, what was but, the last guy to ever read every book was in, like in the 1600s? Oh yeah, he was a la- I forget his name. Some because we we're just talking about it. It was like some scholar had read every book, and that was like the last time someone could actually possible. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that I remember wanting to read all the books in the library when I was a kid, yeah. and um, and then realizing that. Easily two thirds of them, yeah, were not interesting. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that out, like, because I used to go in the library on a Friday night during high school and select a book and just start reading it. It's That's like, it. wow, it's not nope. that interesting. Nope, this is not for me. This <laughs> I'm book. not learning. Exactly. Right. I. Uh, um, it has been great doing all this travel, though, because uh, you can run into some amazing bookstores and and just yeah. run 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 on top of books that you would never have 
read, like I, I bought a couple of nonfiction books and, um, the, I think it's re- reinventing information or something is what it is. Okay. And it's the history of how, uh, how information is decim- uh, you know, distributed. Yeah. Yeah. So initially it was, uh, so it's the history of the library system. Okay. It's the first third of the book. The second third of the book is, uh, I haven't got to it yet, is the history of the university system, the, uh, dialogue and teach lecturing and okay. dialoguing and how that was, how, how that was spread information. And then the last one is l- laboratories. And uh, working with uh, scientific uh, theory of how to uh, try and experiment and re-experiment and re-experiment okay. iteration to yeah, yeah. see if things are really real or true or whatever. Okay. So are you reading anything good right now? Oh, yes. What am I reading? I'm reading The uh, 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. What it's sort that? of a science fiction uh, time travel novel. But uh, this guy, Harry North... Um, he basically he's not a vampire or anything, but he dies. And when he gets reborn, he gets reborn at the beginning of his life again. So, but with all the information he had previously, so at two years old, he has the history, his mind is of that what? of a 60 year old man. And so when he first happens, he, he makes it to seven and everyone just thinks he's this crazy kid cause he knows the future and he doesn't even understand what he is at that point. So he kills himself. So when he comes back, he realizes, oh, I'm being reincarnated into my own, own life again. He goes, oh, if I can not talk keep it together, keep it together until I can get out of this household. <laughs> uh, so every life he re- tries Does to reinvent he last himself. a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes he makes it to 88, but cause now he can figure out. He can make bets on the World Series. Oh, right, And so right. basically his life is come like the 20s to the 90s. Okay. So he, can, he keeps reliving that back. And, and then he finds out there's this club called the Cronus Club of like-minded people who are reliving Having their the lives. Thing. Yes. So he falls in love with some of these ladies and they disappear or they don't come back certain lives because they killed themselves too early or... Oh. Yeah. Interesting. So it's, it's this... And the book is jumping all around the different lives, so it's getting a little confusing. But right. uh, and how it's he, kind of fascinating. Yeah, and he's trying to paint a future for his next life, but he also knows he can kill himself because he's coming back. Oh, so wow. if he's having trouble with somebody, or he can like blow himself up and to save, but he's also not allowed to change the future. Oh, yes. he can't change. No, but he's not supposed to. But that's why the Cronus Club will come in and kill you if you're screwing with oh. the timeline, because that would mean other members can't come back because you just killed them. Oh, or yeah, it gets complicated. Yeah. That is complicated. Yeah. Uh, and who's who wrote it? Claire. Claire North, a British writer. Yeah, British writer. And have you read any of our other stuff? No, that's it. And but I was I've been uh, interested in reading about um, time travel and sort of that oh. situation. This guy Joe Haldeman wrote The Accidental Time Machine, and that was pretty wonderful. Okay. And, um, yeah. You might like these Cage Baker books. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you uh, when we're done with the show, okay. because uh, Rangers of the Dark Forest have heard me wax on, uh, okay, okay. And on and on. Okay, yeah. But uh, Scott Marvel Cassidy yes. uh, is scottmarvelcassidy.com, yes. right? As yes. all of those words. Marvel, M-A-R-V-E-L. Cassidy, C-A-S-S-I-D-Y. Yes. Uh, so everything's spelled like normal, and um, this has been great. Okay, excellent. This has been Thank fascinating. you. It's been fun. Thanks for listening, Rangers, and you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat, <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my god. Thank we you. why don't we just call that as the end of the show?